Ah, sí, qué bueno. Sí, ve la reina. Sí, ¿Ya la ves? Reina. Tiene que arrastrar la reina. La reina. Sí. Este es un adulto. Vive la reina. Ambiaku. The diversity of life here is uh, mind-blowing even for somebody like me who studied fish diversity in the Amazon for over 20 years. We've been working very hard looking at every available habitat trying to collect as many different species as possible and what we found has really been astounding. This collection that we've made is uh, particularly important because it's the first large collection of genetic samples from this basin and genetic samples are especially important because today the science of biodiversity is largely based on DNA. Uh, everything that we do is based on genetic relationships and that's an important focus of conservation, not just protecting species as units, but also protecting the genetic diversity uh, that underlie those species. Emmanuel Newhouse from Brazil. Emmanuel has discovered several new species to science. His PhD focused on a group of South American catfishes in the genus Ancestress. So these are known as bristlenose catfishes. They're popular in the ornamental fish trade. They're really charismatic kind of birds of paradise of, of neotropical rivers with these flamboyant tentacles out of the snout and these big hooks out of the cheek. Although they're, they're really a charismatic engaging group, their taxonomy is really poorly understood. And Emmanuel and I have struggled with the taxonomy of uh, Peruvian ancestress for several years. And this has been, uh, uh, visiting the Ambiaku and collecting these type localities here has been a, a stumbling block for our project. So that was one of the main motivating factors for this trip was to come here and collect uh, these 150 year old species that by observing them, clarifying their um, definition, and then by, the, by clarifying that definition, allowing us to describe new species from throughout Peru. So Emmanuel has discovered several new species in this genus Ancestress and is working on a molecular phylogeny that puts all of the species in the genus into a, a tree of life, if you will, kind of a, a, tr a, a model of evolutionary relationships. And that opens up a lot of corridors for research into the origins of this biodiversity and the factors required to, to maintain that biodiversity over long time scales. As we're seeing this acceleration of a multitude of crises around the world from an ecological environmental standpoint, um, the need for artists working with scientists, though it's an old method, um, becomes ever more important. Science may show us what to care about, but not necessarily show us how to care about it. And so the artistic practice can come in, and artists can take what the scientist is doing and the information that is expanding our knowledge base and create and fill out the full human story around it as to why we need to care about this. Tell me a little bit about David Brooks. Well, what can I say about David Brooks? Um, 
There is an art to the expedition, and uh, that art is a critical kind of central component to everything that we're doing. We first met in the Casiquiare Canal in southern Venezuela, and David provides a, a, a unique perspective on kind of a holistic thinking of biodiversity. So I'm very much focused on fish diversity and uh, these scientific questions of taxonomy, of, ev of evolution and ecology, and David, David's often thinking more uh, holistically about the ecosystem as a whole, contemporary concerns about conservation, and ways of conveying those concepts in a non-traditional means. So whereas I'm, um, I'm conveying knowledge via a scientific method, uh, via hypothesis development and hypothesis testing, he has a variety of tools available to him to convey uh, a distinct perspective on, on truth in, in, this, uh, in this ecosystem that, that is, has so many different dimensions to it. Nathan Lujan has had a remarkable number of species new to science that he's described. Already at this point in his career, a total of 42 species new to science. So I'm more of a skateboarder. <laughs> Uh, in terms of comparing Dr. Lujan to an athlete, I would liken him to the, the famous skater um, from the 80s and 90s, Mark Gonzalez. Mark Gonzalez was a, a well-known street skater. He in, actually invented the form of modern-day street skating, where he's looking at, say, like a, a parking block or, um, or a parking curb or a staircase or a handrail or a bench and rethinking what it can mean. If you almost think about that as a species, <laughs> and rethinking or redescribing or revising what that means as a species in relationship to this larger kind of urban landscape. So it's, and they can think of that as the ecology in a way. So in a way, there's like this relationship between the individual species and the ecology that I see in, a, in, a, in this innovative skater like Mark Gonzalez uh, in relationship to Dr. Lujan. <laughs> The clock is really ticking. As we're witnessing multiple environmental and climate crises around the world, we realize that this is a multi-pronged problem and it doesn't discriminate against anybody. And these are not issues that can be addressed or resolved from a single discipline or a single person. They can only be addressed uh, collaboratively. And so it's the notion of collaboration and the um, the support for collaboration becomes increasingly more important just as our crises are becoming more and more severe.